sport. What is happening to the world of sport and entertainment now that data and technology is starting to become more a part of the game? What happens when coaches of teams can start to monitor the health of their players through personal measurement and quantified self-wearable devices? It's all starting to happen. What happens when location technologies enable you, the viewer, to see how far a footballer has run on the field, how much energy they've expended? Maybe a footballer's salary will one day be linked to the data from their devices from the pitch. Maybe one day the viewers won't choose man of the match, but the man of the match will be chosen by an algorithm. Also, what happens when data and statistics play their part in approaching and understanding the game? And also when technology changes the viewer's relationship between the viewer and the actual sport. So technology and data and how they're playing upon sport in all different varieties of ways. Might that be an interesting analogy to how consumers' lives with data and entertainment is also going to change. If you don't quite understand my drift, then there's an article, again, which you'll see the link tweeted out, um, which explains a little bit more about how data and sport can provide insights on our business. To help us understand more, we are delighted to welcome David Collett from the sports data company Opta and Ricardo Nasuti from AC Roma Football Club to give us a little bit of insight into how data and sport are becoming more intertwined. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first two speakers of the session. Hi all, hi everyone, benvenuti, welcome. Uh, I want to thank first of all Charlie for the invitation here at the Festival of Media because uh, uh, I and my club, we are honored to be here uh, to this special event, thank you. And um, so, let's go to the session. Uh, the theme is what happens when a, a machine picks the man of the match. Uh, this is a, a reasonable uh, question because uh, data, uh, the impact of data today on the sport is very huge and is transforming the way we are living the sport, no? Uh, Charlie, in an article where uh, he presented just this session, uh, wrote that there is uh, now today a marriage of data and sports. And uh, the question is, uh, the important question is uh, bringing together sport and data. Is it all about uh, data for progress or data for entertainment? I think that we need uh, to strike a right balance between the two because, uh, because we have to understand that uh, data, analysis, data analysis today is an opportunity for uh, a football club, but for every sports company. Uh, so we have to use, uh, according to, to me, data in order both to help the team to improve performances on the pitch and also in the same way uh, to get closer to fun. And um, because uh, we know that uh, from one end, the progress is in video technology, wearable sensor, uh, give the opportunity to a technical staff of um, a football team, of a basketball team to to extract a lot of uh, uh, great uh, quantity of information uh, uh, that can help the team to improve the performances. And uh, on the other hand, uh, it's important to use uh, the data just to create engagement with fans. And uh, we do this with the uh, AS Roma. I am the digital content manager, so I will focus the attention on the, how we use data analysis just to create engagement with fans because uh, in this way we can uh, increasing the fan base and uh, in a long period, uh, indirectly, we can also uh, increase the revenues of the club. Uh, I think that uh, before going on, the, the most important thing uh, in order uh, to create engagement with fans using data is the spirit behind this choice, this choice because uh, uh, we, want, uh, we have to not to spy or cheat the, the fans. On the contrary, we have to involve the fans in things they are interested in. 
So we can engage them before uh, with data uh, uh, related to a um, football match, to a player, to the season. And then in a second way, we can also involve them uh, giving information, ticket, uh, t-shirts, apps, and so on. Um, so, oops. Uh, let's go uh, for client presentation on the relationship between data and funds. I suppose I, I think that data is the key to helping uh, the new generation of fans um, <coughs> understand the game better. Because uh, yesterday, the in-game data was used only by manager, technical staff. But now, um, and we in uh, AS Roma do this, we, we offer to the fans the opportunity to, to, to see all this data, in-game data. And this is a, a little uh, revolution because uh, uh, in this way, we are offering uh, the, to, the, to the fans the opportunity to turn uh, opinion into facts in a, in a very sm smart and uh, short way. And um, because uh, uh, we, we have to know that there is a drama within, the, within data, because uh, uh, we give the opportunity to the fans using engagement uh, with data to, to judge the performances of, the, of a football match or a basketball match, of everything, uh, in a, directly and uh, from themselves, without the help of TV commentator, of uh, uh, things, uh, other, other, uh, other kind of help. So, uh, pass to, to, to know how we, in AS Roma, we use this, um, this data, above all, uh, focalizing the attention on how we use the, the data uh, on digital media. I use this uh, hashtag, Rise to Glory, because this uh, hashtag is used, uh, was used by the club uh, some weeks ago, the day of the presentation of the new stadium. And uh, I use this because it summarizes the, the, the purpose uh, the club wants to, to reach in, uh, the, the, in the future. The, the, the club wants to build uh, an inter a competitive team on the pitch and uh, an international brand out of the pitch. And the data will help the, the team in uh, both these uh, purposes. No? Uh, we will focalize the attention of how we use data on digital media, and uh, we, we will see uh, how, is how uh, is important the use of digital media and is strategic in this, uh, in this way. Um, before going uh, forward, I give you just a very short overview about the, the club and um, some, um, some data, data. Uh, the club uh, S Roma was founded in 1927 and uh, in uh, its history has won uh, uh, 14 national trophies. Our, our ownership is American and um, um, we have in the team some uh, international uh, star players like Totti, De Rossi and Maicon and so on. And uh, according to a survey, we have uh, in the world 87 uh, poten potential fans uh, across uh, five continents worldwide. Uh, this is an important um, thing, and uh, we are, uh, for example, uh, the, the second most popular club, uh, Italian club in the U.S. Uh, we have the American uh, ownership uh, since three years, and before this period, we have no pre digital presence. We, we, we started to build uh, our digital presence just uh, um, in uh, the 2011. And now we, have, we start to have a good numbers on digital um, platforms. We have a, a, a website with the, um, these numbers. We have also uh, active on social media. We have now more, more than 3 million likes on Facebook page, uh, 3,000 mm, yes, uh, 36, uh, subscribers on uh, YouTube, and we are on Pinterest, Tumblr. So we are, uh, we are um, increasing our digital presence because uh, uh, the, the purpose the club wants to reach to build an international uh, um, brand passing uh, pass through this, uh, the, the development of digital media. So now we will focalize the attention on the, how we use data uh, to engage fans on, uh, on our platforms. And uh, we know that the difference between a good engagement and a bad engagement with the fans is uh, given by the quality of the, of the contents. And, the co and we want to increase the quality of the contents just thanks to 
the use of uh, uh, data. We, uh, we started from this season a collaboration, a partnership with the Opta, uh, who help us uh, in, um, um, in, uh, in building our, our contents on uh, the digital platforms. Uh, let's see how we see in the details the, um, um, the data offered by Opta. Uh, about, um, starting from website, we create, a, uh, there is a permanent presence and cross-reference uh, of Opta data on the official website by means of uh, the creation of a uh, team stati statistics section where you can find a lot of information about the, um, the team and the individual stats and the uh, team stats. Then we have also another uh, section just uh, connected with the, everything you want to know to every single player. Also the, the past uh, numbers of the career. You can see here the, 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 the numbers of Francesco Totti. Then we, uh, we work a lot with Opta, uh, above all during the, the match day. This is uh, our match day report where the fans can uh, live in a different way with uh, different eyes the, uh, a match, a football match. Also live, but also when they can, um, also after an hour the, the match is finished. Because there they can see uh, uh, information that they can see during the, at the stadium morning TV. Because there in this section they can um, they can know a lot of information and they can uh, uh, judge the, the, the football match or, or uh, the, an action or uh, the, the a performance of a player with, um, by, the, by himself, no? So without the help of the TV or uh, commentator TV or so, and so on. We use the Opta stats also before and the post the match uh, thanks to the press kit. And uh, we usually also write stories on websites just to engage fun using the, the data uh, of Opta. And uh, then uh, I want to show you how we use uh, our social media to lead, uh, to push our fans towards the website statistics section. Uh, we also create an hashtag, ASR stats, on the, um, uh, on the, that we use on uh, Facebook and Twitter above all. And uh, we push the, the website section using this hashtag. We also generate engagement uh, with fans using stats. Uh, here there is an example in the first post. We ask the question uh, uh, to fans, uh, asking them to, to, to answer, comment in the post. And then in a second post, we give them the, the, the answer. Uh, and then we also, this usually the, the game after, uh, the day after the game, we give tasters of stats after, um, uh, on, the, on the previous match. And uh, we uh, usually uh, post uh, five or six uh, tweets every Monday. So this is, um, we saw the, the, how we use the contents, uh, uh, how we use uh, the data offered by Opta in uh, the digital contents. The Opta, also contribu contribute our, uh, to help the, the, the team uh, on the pitch, to perform uh, in a better way uh, the team during the match. Uh, but um, uh, I can see, uh, I can sh I'm sure that uh, uh, David Collett from Opta will uh, now um, give you more information about this. I want to just to um, talk to, uh, to be, uh, to arrive to a conclusion, because uh, we, uh, Charlie was spoken about the marriage of sport and uh, data. And uh, we in AS Roma uh, are supporting this, uh, this marriage, but uh, we, we are also um, supporting this with the, the, the right spirit, the right uh, uh, point of view, because we want to, to, to maintain this right balance between data for progress and data for entertainment. The last example I give you is uh, just uh, uh, to show you that uh, this is our uh, way of living the, the data is the, um, uh, the, uh, the project of a new stadium. In the new stadium, there will be a 3,060 <coughs> degrees video screen running around the rooftop upon which fans will be able to watch the in-game data live. So uh, we will support this marriage between uh, data and sports also in the future. Thank you for your attention. 
I'm sorry for my English, but uh, I uh, hope that uh, David Collett uh, will uh, be uh, very clever than me, and so I give the ball to David. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's uh, get this moving uh, Opta to give a larger perspective after this uh, specific example about IS Roma belongs to a group named Perform, which is number one in the world in providing content in the sports digital space. What we do at Opta is we look at different range of sports, football being the number one. We look at what's going on on the pitch, and then we collect a lot of information around what's going on on the pitch, and we distribute that in various forms uh, to serve the needs of different stakeholders within the sports industry, whether they are media, sponsor, betting company, or professional clubs. Now, we work with a lot of official governing bodies which have given us in the last 12 years a lot of credits about how we collect the data, but also how we transform the data into stories. The most important things, we don't sell numbers. We sell stories, we sell engagement, and we help the governing bodies and the world of sports in general create excitement around football, which is a lot emotional. Now, we work a lot with some brands. I can show some quick examples around here, whether it's EA Sports around the Premier League, whether it's Castro around the FIFA and Euro, whether it's Accenture in the rugby, a lot of technology, a consulting company, more and more are turning towards data, whether it's Western Union trying to find a gap between money transfer and transfer in football through the, the form of passes. Brands find a lot of interest. Now, Charlie, uh, as a sort of a preview to this uh, speech, make a great assumption that we, in 90 minutes of football game, would collect more data than the entire British Library. Now, I did my homework, and unfortunately, Charlie, there's 150 million items in the British Library. We are not quite there yet. Apologies for that. <laughs> but we're working on it. And how do we work on that? Well, we are creating, and the business and the industry is creating more point of entry towards collecting the game. Because the desire for the fans is to have a better understanding of what's going on around the football pitch, because it's now an entertainment program. It's a show. And they have accumulated many years of understanding, many years of experience, so they need to know more. So the future will give us more data through wearable device, through GPS, through camera tracking, through technical analysis, like Opta uh, is doing. And the second screen opportunity has shown to be a fantastic uh, platform to give life to that data in many different ways. Uh, clearly, is it more for improvement or for entertain entertainment? Well, both, actually. Data now is already a part of the player's salary. There's a lot of bonuses about how many goals he's going to score, how many victory the club is going to earn. And there's already, in the tracking and physical element of, uh, of the data collection, a link with the player and, and their contract with the clubs to review if they're really engaged, especially during training. Now, the interest in data around sports will be, in the future, shared between on the pitch and off the pitch, actually. So on the pitch, with all those wearable devices, you now have project to have chips within the jersey. Adidas is working on it already with the FIFA. You have chips in the shoes. And you already have companies that create intelligent fibers that they use to create the, the jersey, and those fibers will have detectors. There are already a certain number of companies in the world that will allow to get biometric data. But what's important around that data and the fact to collect it is to be able to create unique stories. And what does it mean for the future of the sports and advertising? It means that you would have more knowledge to tell the story at the back of the game have some insight and understanding through the big data trends, which is really getting correlations. Does people click more on an ad where there's a goal or when there's a positive and emotional link with the football game? We are getting there already. Um, data around football game will soon become a contextual element for supporting and pushing better adverts. 
We will see very soon, very soon, and there are already some projects in the air with some people in the room, to tell brands something great is happening here, something emotional, something where the viewers in front of their TV are more connected with what's going on and their attention are higher because there's a, an emotional strength. This is the moment to put your brands ahead and give a better engagement and better exposure. An important thing that Opta discovered in the last 12 years, because sports and data has been related since the beginning, you have to count to measure the performance, so there's a natural relationship, is that data is a great asset for stories. And sometimes many people forget that the data that they collect, turn and editorialize, can create a lot of amazing stories. So there is a different life cycles around, around the data. We, for example, work with company now that can transform all the live data that we collect into automated post-match articles. So in the future, not very far from there, we would have a huge number of automated player profile, post-match analysis, season analysis, automatically generated by artificial intelligence. That's not the future. We did some tests already with some company. It works pretty well, and the more data we would have, biometric, physical, technical, the more that story from social media, the more that story will be engaging and, and captivating. Another key way is gamification. We realize and we found out throughout the years that the data that we produce is a fantastic opportunity for brand to create interaction and engagement for the fans because using the data as a way to offer prediction in some games. Where is the ball going to end up in the goal? Where before the match, I can play with my second screen, with my iPhone app, try to predict who will perform at a better level, who will uh, score the goal in which part of the, of, the, of the pitch, how many shots is going to happen. And the betting industry, as well as the second screen, mobile, tablet, associated with sponsors, has found some fantastic and very interesting um, usage around the data towards the gamification. Of course, one important element that we understood throughout the years is data is to tell story, and a pictures tell a story a thousand times better than some words. So visualization has become a key part of our industry and our work to make sure that that data whether live, pre-match, or post-match, is rendered in the nicest form of infographics. And you would see them already um, sort of growing in numbers on internet, on social media, because they are a nice piece of content, easily shareable, and they tell the story in a great ways. Simple facts, simple element, great visual, and they synthesize, they summarize the essence of what's going on around the game. And as Ricardo says, the fans and people who are passionate about the topics, they want to prove their passion. They want to show that they know more. And the first thing that footballers, football fans, and even footballers does is they share those infographics. They share those data inside. They share those facts. So one um, interesting uh, uh, learnings that we got around the, the data value is that it follows a different chain. It's an information in itself. It requires some skills, and the work of data scientists in sports and football has been growing in professional clubs and in many other areas. And it's also an opportunity when mix and merge with other forms of data to create stronger uh, engagement. We believe that very soon, uh, more sponsors will take ownership of that data and we see it more and more coming because the Intels and the big companies that are coming from the technology background, especially those who are um, big data specialists, like IBM, for example. Sports is a fantastic platform to tell in a more emotional and in a more exciting way what their technology, what their capabilities are. So whether it's around tennis or rugby, it's much easier for them to explain to their client, look what we do with so much data in sports and how we create a fantastic story behind it. If you're Tesco or any of supermarket, Walmart, give me all your client loyalty card data and I, I will give you the same insight and the same story. So that's in an essence the, um, the, the idea of the larger perspective behind sports uh, and data. Thank you for your attention.
thank you very much, David. We don't have time for questions, but um, definitely interested to hear more about how your technology is changing sport in the speaker's session and speaker's corner.